was a mighty nation, blessed above all of creation. It was a rare and precious pearl. Conceived in faith and liberty, home of the brave, land of the free, it was the envy of the world. But this shining city on a hill has turned from the Creator's will and let evil take control. Now the reckless men who lead them want to strip away their freedom and to steal their very soul. Now it's smoke and mirrors, switching baits, criticize and confiscate, and let the guilty walk away. In this once righteous, godly nation, in the halls of education, they forbid a child to pray. They say we need to spread the wealth. They pretend to guard the health of the feeble and the poor. While the hand they hold behind their backs confuses and conceals the fact that the wolf is at the door. There's an unseen hand that pulls the string. It makes his little puppets dance to every song he sings. And tonight falls in on a rising tide. Look beyond the shadows. Behold a pale horse. Resurrect the Republic, RTR, Truth Radio Broadcast on RBN Network. I'm your host for this evening, Lori Anderson, and I am co-host is joining me tonight is Eric Hughes-Jones of Courtroom Observers, and he's also known as the Freedom Screamer. How are you tonight, Eric? Not very good. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What's going on? Well, I literally just about vomited all over my floor listening to Rex Tillerson today at his confirmation hearing. And and the thing that fascinated me the most about this whole thing was the other talk show host. I heard it in a clip that another talk show host was playing and the talk show host didn't even see fit to mention this most obvious, disgusting statement that Rex Tillerson made today three times in one minute. He used the word global world order. Oh, and he wow. wasn't talking about it. And he wasn't talking about it. And where, where is everybody? First of all, folks, you're not going to hear this anywhere else. If this mm-hmm. show goes bye-bye because Tom went bye-bye and Lori can't come at night because she's got to work in the morning and take care of little kids and I got to go to work and take care guess what? You're not going to get it anywhere. I didn't hear anybody talk about this. Three times in one minute. Russia is looking to find its place in this uh, global world order. So in this global world order where Russia is trying to find it. And then, even worse than that, he comes out and says, it's not likely that we're ever going to be friendly with friends with. Friends was the word he used. Friends, plural. He said, it's not like, I believe this with Mike. Hey, if you can pull this up, man. I would really appreciate it. It's it's all you have to do. It's going to be easy to find because he used the word global world order three times in one minute. And it was in you the context what, Eric, of... Yep. I just want to say this real quick to you. It is amazing. Yep. You know, you can always tell when God is in the mix for our radio show. And you can confirm that I have not discussed with you what I'm going to discuss tonight, Correct. Not, I have not talked to you about tonight's show. We just had a brief text, and you said, will you be on with me tonight? And I said, yes, in one word, answer, and uh, you yep. texted me back some smiley faces. Well, okay. guess no, what? We not, everything so you're, you're talking, gonna... yeah, everything you're talking about right now actually goes with the topics and everything I'm going to go down and break down for the people tonight. Beautiful. And Eric is right. Let me tell awesome. you right now, you will not I get thought this. You, were gonna, I, you know, God, I, Lori, you're a sweetheart, and I appreciate. It. I thought you were going to yell at me for ragging at the new administration, but it has no. to be done. And I'm not. It's not my intention. But God bless mm-hmm. Lori. Lori's been very generous, by the way, Mr. Trump administration and all his minions, trying to hold your things together with coat hangers and duct tape, and trying to prop it up the unprofitable. And I've been worried from the get go that what we're witnessing here is good Mason versus bad Mason. And I'm not, according to them, I'm not saying there's any good Masons. 
But this is what's been put forth since George Washington and his best friend, George Clinton. Do you know who George Clinton was? Not only George Washington's best friend. He was the vice president under Jefferson and Madison. And he was also a nephew of British Admiral Clinton, who was the director of the British armies in the Revolutionary War. We'll go down that rabbit hole later. Well, I'm Thank going you, Lori, to... For not... I'm not going to get on to you. You know as well as I do, and every uh, buddy who listens to me or has followed me has known, I don't care. Uh, we're going to call out the individuals just like uh, I did about yep. Mattis. And uh, as promised last night to the individuals on the show, so y'all may want to get some pens and pencils ready for reference points um, because I'm going to give some information that, is going to make it very easy for you to look up. Plus, of course, we'll provide it, and we'll tell you where to find it, too. But, you know, um, I give benefit of the doubt where benefit of the doubt is due. Um, I'm not I going do as to... Well. S- I do as well, and even though I ragged at Trump early, because I suspected this was going to happen. Uh, I, 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 uh, people have been listening the past few weeks. They heard me very, very, very positive, very reconciliatory and saying, Trump, we're looking forward to this new administration. Jeff Sessions is going to do the right thing. I just know it. I'm going to think positive, and then positive things will manifest themselves. Yeah, just right. think. We have glasses, to remember. Yeah. But we also have to remember, Eric, in all fairness, right? We do not know. Um, uh, and I did not hear the confirmation hearing you're talking about. But that individual in that confirmation hearing that said that is one of the ones that is the problem. We would agree with that, right? Yeah, it's Rex and, Tillerson, the big, the big oil man. <laughs> Great, just well, the guys we want running the show now, billionaires and oil men. Look, until we have a president who suffered, and I mean lived in their car for six months or a year, had ice on the inside of their residence because they had to choose food or heat. I have patriots call me saying their eyeballs are hurting because they can't heat their place. they got to choose between heat and food. Mm-hmm. These guys don't think normally, okay? Ted Cruz is a oh. scammer, and mm-hmm. Rand Paul's a scammer, and I'll get into them later. But I'm really disgusted watching these guys tell us that change is going to be building a wall, changing Obamacare from one plan to another. Oh, I got it. Their communism is bad, but yours is good for the new administration. Our, well, their new world order is bad, but our global world order is okay because it's us at the wheel. Once again, okay, I well, mean, please. Okay. Okay, okay, listen, calm down, because we're going to dissect into this, and like I said, um, who was, uh, Mike needs to know, what was the name of the man that was being confirmed that you're talking about? I believe it was Rex Tillerson, the director of Exxon. Okay, Okay. now now let's say this, let's say this though, in all fairness, okay, and um, in all fairness, and this is not on Rex's behalf. This is on Mr. Trump's behalf. Okay. And number one, we don't know if he has the same mindset as this individual. We do know that he has touted time and time and time again that you want successful people in there that know what they're doing because they've already been there, done that, and gone down that route and built their businesses yeah, or that, done their different our, things. I, now, I in that aspect... Okay. I know. Just just calm down because we're going to handle this. Believe me, you're not going to believe what I'm going to expose tonight. So, okay. but, but what I'm saying is Russia, the reason Russia is so under attack in the first place is because they're not going along with those bankers. They're not going along with that order, if you will. We're going right. to dissect into like that. that. That's also the reason, that's also the reason we will go into a little bit of the history of the of the Ukraine, and all of this stems from because, as I was talking about last night, many people did not know that we've got a mass amount of troops going to the Russian border, and they have no idea why. They don't even have it know what's going on. So I'm going to expose that, but it all stems back to the excuse of the Ukraine, which was unlawfully overthrown by these globalists, the same ones you're referring to. Um, Ukraine was not for getting in with the IMF and getting in with these globalists, and that's why they had to overthrow it. President Obama also admitted uh, to helping and and 
uh, being uh, involved with, and they didn't use the word coup, of course, but it was. It was a coup over Ukraine. Um, they admitted U.S. involvement. They, Victoria Nolan, she admitted um, uh, that Washington spent $5 billion in order to overthrow the lawful president of Ukraine. And this is why Russia came to the aid because it was another, once again, you know, a source of conflict created by these bankers. And yes, there are Soros links. And yes, this is the other thing. But all of it is going to stem to be very important because this leads back to NATO people. And we love our military enough that we will stand up, we will speak up, and we will fight for their right not to be slaughtered and be put in unlawful invasions where they get killed. We will right. We're we will the only stand ones trying up. to keep them alive. We will stand up if we if we see what's going on, we will tell you the truth in order to try and stop a war from happening. Make no mistake. And I'm not gonna go into massive detail um, of the history of Ukraine or the history of Crimea, but remember, I believe it was like 2014, these these individuals, the main, the lamestream fake media kept reporting that Russia invaded Crimea, Russia invaded Crimea, and, and all of this. They had to do Russia as the boogeyman, Russia as the boogeyman, Russia as the boogeyman. And there was a reason for this, everyone, and I'm going to tell you um, something to look up, but what it happened, what you need to know, some information you need to know. As of 2014, the total population of the Republic of Crimea and Sevastopol was 2,248,400 people. Okay? And of that in the statistics, it, it shows that... Um, by the 1897, 35% of Crimea, uh, the Russian, uh, was Russians, okay? Ukrainians, 11%. And, of course, Germans and, and a whole bunch of different aspects of that. However, what you need to know what, what lamestream media never told you, uh, you have what is called the Black Sea Fleet, Okay, the the Black Sea Fleet is a large operational strategic command of the Russian and the formerly formerly Soviet Navy, and it was operating in the Black Sea and in the Mediterranean Sea, and it had been there since the late 18th century. Okay, the 18th century. So so let's understand that. Its ships were based in various harbors of the Black Sea, the Sea of Azov, I hope I said that correctly, while its aviation and infrastructure was based in various locations in Crimea and Crandonor Kerry. Now, when you do the research on this, you find out that Russia, they had what was called the Partition Treaty on the Status and Conditions of the Black Sea Fleet. The treaty was signed between Russia and the Ukraine on May 28th of 1997, whereby the two countries established two independent national fleets and divided armaments and bases between them. Under the treaty, the Black Sea Fleet that was located in the Crimean Peninsula at the time was partitioned between Russia, 81.7%, and Ukraine, 18.3%, with Russia maintaining the right to use the port of Sevastopol in Ukraine for 20 years until 2017. The treaty also allowed Russia to maintain up to 25,000 troops, 24 artillery systems, 132 armored vehicles, and 22 military planes in the Crimean Peninsula. So what do you need to know? When Vladimir Putin, when Crimea started having its issues, which was a... Um, uh, a issue that, of course, was stirred by um, the NATO alliances and Soros and, and all of these people who just cannot leave anybody alone. 
They, they can't mind their own business and, and do anything good for just where they're at. They have to stick their nose in other countries and control everything. So when he sent these troops into Crimea, he sent these troops into Crimea to protect Crimea. He didn't invade anything. He already had a partition treaty, and the troops that were already uh, allowed to be there, and they had bases there. So it was no invasion. The Ukraine issue is because the EU and the IMF bankers don't want the unlawful president that the U.S. government helped to put in by overthrowing a lawful president over Ukraine. So when they want to tell you we must put Russia in truck because of Ukraine and its people and make Russia the boogeyman, Russia's been actually on the right side of this the entire time. Russia has actually been protecting the people, and it's not okay to go in and overthrow a government. Now, the way that that they did this, they used – uh, for Ukraine, they used neo-Nazi individuals and things like that. If you remember, um, there was uh, snipers that had shot into a crowd and shot police officers as well as some protesters, and they kept trying to claim it was Russia and then find out, oops, no, it wasn't. It was actually uh, individuals that were connected with the EU. That had all been exposed. So what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about the problem of our troops being sent over there. And then I'm going to dig into some real numbers. And I'm going to ask uh, President-elect Donald Trump, I'm going to tell him, I have figured out just by this document that I've read for several steps, how to save money, how to get out of the foreign entanglement that the founders warned us about, how to have a much more secure union, how to lower the global death rate, as well as um, not having to raise taxes to pay for the new ships that he's wanting to do for the Navy. That's a good thing, Eric. I know a lot of people are are against that, but our ships have depleted. Our ships, uh, our Navy and the Marines are actually the only ones in the Constitution that are allowed to stand more than two years. Um, We do need to have a fleet. doesn't mean we have to use them and be invading other countries. However, we do need that fleet. So when I go into exposing this, I'm going to tell them how to do all that and not raise taxes on the people, as well as help stop this kind of attack against other um, countries that absolutely don't want part of this globalist agenda. So this really ties in with what you were, what you were talking about, Eric. And, um, So I'm kind of tickled about that. So I want to let everybody know, last night I made a statement that NATO is who our military take orders from. And as you know, always I back up what I say with proof because I am not fake news. So what I'm going to do first is I am going to let you hear uh, former Defense Secretary Leon Panetta uh, on um, March the 9th of 2012. He was sitting before Congress, uh, and he was asked, uh, it was the... Armed Services Committee, SD-106, and he was asked about, this is in reference to Syria, and uh, Jeff Sessions asks him a question about where he thinks he's getting his permission from, and Leon Panetta makes it very clear. So I want to prove to you this point. Why? Because, number one, I want our military men and women know that we love you more than you will ever comprehend. And we are trying to keep you you alive. We are fighting for you, and we are tired of NATO that is unlawful. It, it, we should never be in it. We need to withdraw from NATO immediately. Um, That's right. They they have done nothing good. They have destroyed the globe, and that's all they want to do. 
Power, control, retired. destroy the globe, steal resources, get out of NATO. And I'm going to uh, – so let me share that clip, and then we'll go from there. Eric, because this really ties in everything with what you're saying. Later on this evening, I'm going to give you all a quick quick update uh, real quick about Tom. Um, Lori is expected to – Texas 101 Lori, uh, Tom's significant other, is supposed to be on the show tomorrow night if you would like to hear more information. I can tell you really quick, though. Uh, Tom is still in solitary confinement. However, he is doing all right. They are finally giving him some non-narcotic uh, medication that is not his prescriptions, but at least they're giving him something. Um, he is still in Lane County, Oregon. He um, And they do still need some donations coming in. If you want to donate to help Tom uh, to be able to help with communications for getting communications or, or food or clothes or even to help uh, get a constitutional attorney that would that would really sink their teeth into this, uh, please donate to Tom Lacavera at gmail.com through PayPal or you can go to resurrectorepublic.com and you can click on the PayPal button and do it that way too. All the money that is donated to that will be going uh, for Tom's uh whether it be phone or, or food or clothes or uh, to try to help get a constitutional attorney that, that's in there. So I wanted to let that be known real quick. Okay, so if you would, Mike, let's go ahead and play um, LV6. Do you think that you can act without Congress uh, to and initiate a no-fly zone in Syria without congressional approval? You know, again, uh uh, our, our goal would be to uh, to seek international permission, and uh, we would we would come to the Congress uh, and inform you uh, and determine uh, how best to approach this. Uh, whether or not we would uh, want to get uh, permission from the Congress, uh, I think those are issues we would have to discuss as we decide what to do here. Well, I'm almost breathless about that because what I heard you say is we're going to seek international approval. And they will come and tell the Congress what we might do, and we might seek congressional approval. No, well, I want to just say to you, that's a big dish. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, you've served in the Congress. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree that that uh, would be pretty breathtaking to the average American? So would you no, like to clarify that? But I've, uh, I, I, you know, we, I've also uh, served uh, with Republican presidents and Democratic presidents who have all, always reserved the right to defend this country if necessary. But you, before we do this, you would seek permission of the international authorities. If we're, work, if we're working with an international coalition and we're working with NATO, uh, we would uh, want to be able to uh, get uh, appropriate permissions in order to be able to, to do that. That's, that's something that you know, all of these countries would want to have some kind of legal basis on which to act. What legal basis are you looking for? What what entity? Well, I, obviously, the U, if if NATO made the decision to go in, that would be one. Uh, if uh, if we if we, we developed a, an international coalition beyond NATO, uh, then obviously some kind of UN security resolution would so be an, the basis on, for a that. coalition of. So you're saying NATO would give you a legal basis and uh, um, an ad hoc coalition of nations would provide a legal basis? If we, if we, if we were able to put together a coalition uh, and uh, were able to uh, move together, then obviously we would seek whatever legal basis we would need in order to make that uh, uh, justified. I mean, you, you, you know, we, we can't just pull them all together. Uh, in a uh, combat operation without getting the, uh, the legal basis on which to act. Well, who are you asking for the legal basis from? If it's, uh, obviously, if the U.N. passed a security resolution, as it did in Libya, we would do that. Uh, if, uh, if NATO came together, as we did in Bosnia, uh, we would rely on that. So, you know, we, we have options here uh, if we want to build uh, the kind of international approach to dealing with the situation. Well, let, let me just for the record be clear again, Senator, so there's no misunderstanding. When it comes to the national defense of this country, 
President of the United States has the authority under the Constitution to act to defend this country, and we will. Uh, if, it, if it comes to a, an operation where we're trying to build a coalition of nations to work together to go in and operate as we did in Libya or Bosnia, for that matter, Afghanistan, we want to do it with permissions either by NATO or by the international community. Okay, so what you need to know, NATO headquarters is where representatives from all the member states come together to make decisions on a consensus basis, and it offers a venue, per se, for dialogue and cooperation between partner countries and NATO member countries, enabling them to work together in their efforts to bring about peace and stability. Peace and stability? No. Their agenda. Roughly 4,000 people work at NATO headquarters on a full-time basis. Of these, some 2,000 are members of the national delegations and supporting staff members of national military representatives to NATO. About 300 people work at the missions of NATO partner countries. Some 1,000 are civilian members of the international staff or NATO agencies located within the headquarters, and about 500 are members of the international military staff, which also includes civilians now these individuals were not elected to represent anybody so to make this clear these foreign entanglements these countries sit around a table and they decide what they want and if Another country doesn't want anything to do with it. Example, Ukraine didn't want to enter into the EU. Well, because we said so sitting at this table and we decided you're going to enter into the EU whether you like it or not. So all of these bullies get around this table and they decide they're going to force individuals into a contract, or we're just going to overthrow you and take you over by force. That is what is going on. Now, as I said yesterday, this crud about demonizing Russia, this crud about using the excuse about the Ukraine, you can't use the excuse of the Ukraine when it was unlawfully overthrown from a Uh, A democratically elected president that was there, he was overthrown, put in by the United States and the UK and the EU. All of them uh, had their hands in it. Soros ties, all of this good little stuff. Uh, Neo-Nazi individuals involved with it. And then, of course, for some reason, and, and I don't these people have a mindset that blows my mind. They think they have a right to do this. And then these uh, fake media outlets will report it as if Russia is the bad guy for defending civilians and defending the people that are there because they don't want it. Then NATO, after they demonize, and this is why you've heard so much Russia hack, Russia hack, Russia hack, Russia hack, Russia hack, Russia hack. It's because they have to demonize Russia so they can make it okay on what they are doing. And they are the ones acting in an aggressive act of war. After that note, we'll be back after a word from our sponsors. Please hang in with us because we've got more proof coming for you. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. You've probably heard about all the great benefits of goat milk soap. But did you know, some companies take shortcuts. At Old New England Soap, we make our organic goat's milk soap using 36% goat's milk. That's 17% more than most others. Our bars are larger. 
so they last longer, producing lots of lather packed with vitamins. And our soap is a natural moisturizer that smooths dry and damaged skin. Order online at oldnesoap.com. That's oldnesoap.com. You've tried the rest. Now try the best. Oldnesoap.com. Water-based soaps on supermarket shelves use harsh chemical acids to break down dead skin cells. And that's just not good for you. At Old New England Soap, our soaps are made without chemical ingredients, contain no alcohol or petroleum products, and use 85% organic materials and carry the USDA's organic certification. Try some today. Go to oldnesoap.com. That's oldnesoap.com. Oldnesoap.com. It's time for you to have your own custom smartphone app for your business and pay way less than you can imagine. Introducing the I Can Get To Silent Salesman mobile marketing app, a global mobile marketing and communication tool for your business. Go to appsapart.com and learn how you could earn up to $36,351 or more per month just by inviting two people or less into a $14.95 per month program. Go to appsapart.com and be sure to watch the video at the top of the site and listen to the audio message from the CEO near the bottom. This is something you won't want to miss. Go to appsapart.com now or call 646-860-9540. That's 646-860-9540. Get the I can get too. That's I-C-A-N-G-E-T, the number two, silent salesman app at appsapart.com. That's A-P-P-S-A-P-A-R-T.com. Extendivite is more than just a heart tonic. Most basic diseases are caused by yeast in the gut and metals in the liver, and we all have a bit of both. The garlic in Extendivite has a yeast-killing effect in the gut while also helping the sulfur enzyme in the liver get rid of the metals. Extendivite just may improve your overall health. Products like Extendivite are the only way we are going to get our society healthy. And if you're waiting for the government and pharmaceutical care to solve your health problems, you're going to have a long, disappointing wait, I think. Extendivite is a complete formula for extended life in the new millennium. 80 can be the new 60. Extendivite is available in capsule or liquid form for just $69.95 for a two-month supply. To get started, call 1-877-928-8822. That's 1-877-928-8822 or visit partdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendovite. You, your husband, your wife, your children, we all need food. And with dozens of food storage companies buying up airtime all over radio, it's hard for you to know which company you can actually trust. Hey folks, John Statmiller here. We at RBN understand, which is why I personally searched out a storable food company and one with similar core values to us here at RBN and, of course, you, the listener. Well, I found such a company. I'd like to introduce you to Numana Food Storage. Numana Food Storage, highly nutritious, GMO-free, contains no aspartame, no high fructose corn syrup, has no chemical preservatives or soy, and Numana Food Storage has a 25-year shelf life. To back up my claims, we've made Numana Food Storage the exclusive food sponsor of RBN. Call 888-597-0775, 888-597-0775. Order online at numanarepublic.com. That's N-U-M-A-N. NNA Republic.com. Food storage you'll love to eat. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. This is Resurrect the Republic RTR Truth Radio broadcast on RBN. I am your host, Lori Anderson, joined with co host. Eric Hughes-Jones of Courtroom Observers, also known as the Freedom Screamer. I'm going to take a call really quick before we get back on to uh, the the proof and the things you need to know about what is really going on. How are you doing tonight, Greg? Lori, uh, thanks, Lori. And uh, Eric, I really appreciate your show and all your dedication. And to Tom, I hope he's doing well. Solitary does not sound fun. Okay, no, so um, thank you. NATO, wanted to touch on NATO. Have you people ever heard of or watched, and it's an eight-hour or so, well, first-hand knowledge documentary, a woman named Kay Griggs. Kay Griggs, have you ever heard of her? 
No, I have not. Have you, Eric? Wow. Well, once you're heartbroken and want to cry your eyes out, watch the very first hour, and she will explain what NATO truly is. She was married to um, a, a general or something like that, and mm -hmm. she was a very pretty lady, and um, he was a general, and they were located out in Virginia. Oh, Arizona, wait a minute. North I think I know who you're talking about. She was married to Special Forces um, uh, General. And she discusses yes, and it special was all forces. About the yes. Sexuality and the child yep. pedophilia and yep. all of the crazy MK Ultra junk behind NATO. And it will yep. break your heart, those people She's listening. She's got blonde hair. Hey, Griggs. Does she have she, blonde hair? Yes, pretty lady. Okay. And she yeah. is just flat into the camera and just telling it like it is about what it was. It was just one great big nest of homosexuals. Mm -hmm. she, was, she didn't uh, know, you know that the man she married was a homosexual. Uh, he swung both ways, and, and, and it'll break your heart because mm -hmm. it, will, it, it peels back the layer of the onions of what's really going on behind the scenes. And, that's really and you know what? You Thank you so much for bringing that up, Greg. I had seen that now that you mentioned it. When you said Virginia, it clicked to me. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do for the listeners, I'm going to find it on YouTube because I know it used to be on YouTube. And I'm going to put it in my uh, Resurrect the Republic RTR Truth Radio Broadcast collection on my G+. You can find me on G+, by typing in Lori, L-O-R-R-I-A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N. -R -R -E find me on G+, and, and follow that collection, and uh, you'll get that. That is a very good suggestion, Greg. I, I yeah. at one point I actually tried to find her, um, and I have wow. had no success. Yeah, yeah, if you I had can no find success. Find her, boy! I'll tell you. And just to the listening audience, if you have not heard of Kay Griggs, it's an eight-hour series ad nauseum mm -hmm. about what goes on inside. Mm -hmm. Uh, the top of special forces and how they move up the line is basically homosexuality. And, and the boy, stuff they're she forced to do. Out from the, the abuse to the how mm -hmm. all the wives just clam up because they're all on a, a, a ride and they're all being spoiled and flaunted overseas for, mm -hmm. you know, kind of... Uh, semi-ambassador uh, positions of, of greeting uh, other countries, uh, delegates and things, and it's a big, fat homo nest. Big, Right, fat and the ones perverted. that are not, the, the now I know some special forces that are not, um, but I do know uh, of her testimony on the end of things, but I do also know that there are some that went in and they weren't like that and they were forced into it. Uh, because otherwise they wouldn't be allowed in. Um, yes, and, and there, there are there, also, there's a lot of psychological warfare that goes on uh, yes, for these guys to get where they get. Silent little, uh, how do I say, celebrations that go aboard ship, and this isn't you know, aimed at the Navy or the Marines or anything. It just happens that apparently by crossing the equator, there's a little homo celebration going on. As a matter of fact, Years, a couple of years ago, you might have remembered a report about one of the Navy commanders being relieved of his ship because they found a goat on board the boat. No, I don't remember that one. Okay, yeah, you can look that one up. But anyway, you want your heart broken. Kay Griggs isn't kidding. Just watch the first hour of the eight hours, and you won't really need to go much further. You will probably sit there in tears. And that's all i got to say. Thank you, kids. You know what? Thank you very much, Greg, for calling in and saying that. I had forgotten completely about that. And he is right. You That is, that is definitely um, – it is an interview uh, that will – definitely make your mouth drop on that so uh thank you once again greg for calling in and, and mentioning that so i wanted to get back to real quick uh the evidence of what i am saying because as you know we are not fake news around here um i wanted to give you some more proof about what i'm saying about the ukraine i'm gonna let victoria noland herself um speak to you through a clip admitting that she's that, that they were involved with spending $5 billion uh, to overthrow the lawful president of the Ukraine. If you could, Mike, go ahead and play LV-5. Well, 
thank you, Roman. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for being here and for your continued support for the U.S.-Ukraine relationship. And thank you for the invitation to speak to you today. Uh, still jet-lagged from my third trip in five weeks to Ukraine and my days uh, in Kiev uh, earlier this week. I don't have to tell this crowd that these are historic and challenging times for the people of Ukraine, for the Ukrainian-American relationship, and for people everywhere who care about the future of that great country. The world is watching the drama that is unfolding in the center of Kyiv. The Euromaidan movement has come to embody the principles and values that are the cornerstones for all free democracies. What began on November 24th as a protest against President Yanukovych's decision to pause on the route to Europe has become much deeper and bigger. After blood was spilled by security forces on November 30th, the movement also became about justice and civil rights and Ukraine's desire to have a government, Ukrainians' desire to have a government that respects them, that listens to them, that protects them, and that provides for them, a modern democratic government. That was palpable when I made my first visit to the Maidan on December 5th. When Ukrainians say they are European, this is what they mean. And as one very prominent Ukrainian businessman said to me, the Maidan's movement, movement's greatest achievement is that it has proven that the people of Ukraine will no longer support any president, this one or a future one, who does not take them to Europe. Throughout this period, the United States message has been clear and unequivocal. We stand with the people of Ukraine in their search for justice, human dignity, security, a return to economic health, and for the European future they have chosen and that they deserve. As you know, and as Roman said, I returned to, uh, to Ukraine for my third visit in five weeks last Tuesday in support of these very goals, this time conducting parallel coordinated high-level diplomacy with EU High Representative Kathy Ashton with all of the key Ukrainian stakeholders. Then, halfway through our visit, in the wee hours of Wednesday, December 10th, we witnessed the appalling show of force by government forces who turned riot police, bulldozers, and tear gas on the Maidan demonstrators as they sang hymns and prayed for peace. Ukrainians of all ages and backgrounds flooded to the Maidan to protect it. Secretary Kerry wasted no time in expressing the United States' disgust at this decision of the Ukrainian Ukrainian government, and by morning the riot police had been forced to retreat. Later that same day, I spent more than two hours with President Yanukovych. It was a tough conversation, but also a realistic one. I made absolutely clear to him on behalf of the United States that what happened December 10th and more general, generally what has been happening in security terms is absolutely impermissible in a European state, in a democratic state. But I also made clear that the United States believes there is a way out for Ukraine, that it is still possible to save Ukraine's European future, and that that is where we wanted to see the president lead his country. And that was going to require immediate steps to de-escalate the security situation and immediate political steps to end the crisis and get Ukraine back into a conversation with Europe and with the International Monetary Fund. As you all know, and as I'm sure you just heard from Anders and other colleagues, Ukraine's economy is in a dire state, having been in recession for more than a year and with less than three months' worth of foreign currency reserves in place. The reforms that the IMF insists on are necessary for the long-term economic health of the country. A new deal with the IMF would also send a positive signal to private markets and would increase foreign direct investment that is so urgently needed in Ukraine. Signing the association agreement with the EU would also put Ukraine on a path to strengthening the sort of stable and predictable business environment that investors require. There 
there is no other path that would bring Ukraine back to long-term political stability and economic growth. We also commend the EU for leaving the door open on the association agreement and for continuing to work with the Ukrainian government on a way forward. The Ukrainian parliament has already passed some 18 separate pieces of required legislation in advance of the Eastern Partnership Summit in Vilnius. Although that was a missed opportunity, it would be a huge shame to see five years worth of work and preparation go to waste if the, if the AA is not signed in the near future. So it is time to finish the job. As Vice President Biden said in remarks last night, President Yanukovych has a choice. He can choose the path that leads uh, to division and isolation, or he can take a leap and take immediate, tangible steps to defuse his country's crisis and start a genuine dialogue with the opposition and agree on a path that returns Ukraine to economic and political health. While these are challenging times in many ways, we also can't lose sight of the fact that this is a time for great optimism as well. You only have to be on the Maidan to feel the energy, to feel the, the, the hope of Ukrainians coursing through the center of Kyiv and across the country. People are engaging because they know they have a stake in the future of their country. We see energy, we see optimism that simply didn't exist in Ukraine 20 years ago. People, people are of all ages, of all classes, of all walks of life are taking ownership of their future and coming out into the streets to demand a European future. They're doing so peacefully, with great courage, and with enormous personal restraint. Since Ukraine's independence in 1991, the United States has supported Ukrainians as they build democratic skills and institutions, as they promote civic participation and good governance, all of which are preconditions for Ukraine to achieve its European aspirations. We've invested over $5 billion to assist Ukraine in these and other goals that will ensure a secure and prosperous and democratic Ukraine. Today, there are senior officials in the Ukrainian government Government, in the business community, as well as in the opposition, civil society, and the religious community who believe in this democratic and European future for their country. And they've been working hard to move their country and their president in the right direction. We urge the government, we urge the president to listen to these voices, to listen to the Ukrainian people, to listen to the Euromaidan, and take Ukraine forward. The support of the people in this room is absolutely essential. We thank you for all you are doing. We thank you for your partnership all these years. And we look forward to continuing to stand shoulder to shoulder with you as we take Ukraine into the future that it deserves. Thank you very much for the time today. So, right there. As long as you go along with what the IMF demands, as long as you go along with what this group that sits around a round table and decides for the globe demands, then everything is absolutely fine. But if not, we're going to sink over $5 billion. I say over $5 billion for a reason. Uh, you'll find that out in just a little bit. But just to prove one more point, that President Obama also admitted to the U.S. government being involved in the coup. Obama told Fareed Zakia a member of both the CFR and Rockefeller's Trilateral Commission, that the United States brokered the coup in the UK, Ukraine last February. Now, that was reported in February of 2015, so that would have been February of 2014 that President Obama was speaking about. And if you could, Mike, play LV3 so we can let our audience hear that as well. And since Mr. Putin made this decision around Crimea uh, and Ukraine, not because of some grand strategy, but essentially because he was caught uh, off balance by uh, the protests in the Maidan and uh, Yanukovych then fleeing after we had brokered a deal uh, to transition power in Ukraine. Uh, and since Mr. Putin made this decision around Crimea uh, and Ukraine, not because of some grand strategy, but essentially because he was caught uh, off balance by uh, the protests in the Maidan and uh, Yanukovych then fleeing after we had brokered a deal uh, to transition power in Ukraine.
So, as you can hear, after they had brokered a deal to transition power into Ukraine, who do they think they are? That that That's not their business to do that. They're not supposed to be doing that, whether you're the United States, whether you're any of these members of the NATO organizations. This is absolutely detrimental to not only the globe, but to the United States of America as a whole. And but it see, is that's causing... it. They're running a business. They're not running a government. Exactly, exactly. And it all leads that's back, of course, to the problem course, with running a government bankers. like a business. That's right. That's right. So let's see what the whole reason that we've done this part was to confirm what I said last night. And I will say that there are some... Uh, propaganda news sites, and what I mean by that, of course, for any new listeners, are quote unquote what others call mainstream media uh, that have been just starting to report on uh, the troops going into Russia. That'll be on my G plus. I'm not even going to play that for y'all. It is it is really sickening how they want to portray Russia as being the bad guy on this, but of course they have to justify going in and sending sending all these troops. Let's see what the Germans think about um, what is going on. Now, now remember, Germany is also part of the NATO situation. They are, they are part of that. But we have proof that the German people are completely against this. Mike, could you please play LV2? Anti-NATO sentiments fill the air in northern Germany as residents voice objection to a transfer of forces by the military alliance through their country. The protesters have rallied in the uh, port city of uh, Bremerhaven, where scores of U.S. tanks and armored vehicles, along with some 3,500 Americans, docked on Friday. They are going to be transferred to eastern Europe to bolster NATO positions near Russia. The demonstrators have called for an end to what they deem as NATO's militaristic march against uh, Russia. They fear that the deployment could fuel tensions and eventually spark a war. I'm here to explain peace to Russians because I'm afraid of new wars. As with the maneuvers of new wars begin, and this big maneuver is the one that quite scares me, and I'm here to speak against this. The military equipment, which includes 87 tanks and 144 fighting vehicles, are just part of the biggest transfer of U.S. military hardware to the region since the breakup of the Soviet Union. The contingent will take part in uh, regular military exercises in a number of countries like Poland, Estonia and Bulgaria. Russia considers the buildup near its western borders as a threat. Okay, Mike, you can go ahead and stop it there if y'all want to see the rest of the clip. You're more than welcome to because it goes into an interview and different things like that. But I wanted you to hear that. Of course, you're not going to hear that on on the fake news sites. Now, what you need to know, I have uh, one clip that I do want you to hear because it is imperative uh, to go into the document that I found that I can share with you all. And I want you to know you can also find what we are going to be discussing on Department of Defense, U.S. Department of Defense uh, website as well, which I I all have all those links in my Google Plus. If you would, Mike, go ahead and play LV4, and please, everybody, listen closely. Meanwhile, the United States has briefly stationed its troops in Poland as part of an ongoing NATO operation to deploy forces along Russian borders. Now, the troops landed in Rokla in southwestern Poland. Nearly 2,800 tanks and other pieces of U.S. military hardware are also being transferred from Germany. A NATO general said the deployment was part of the military alliance's efforts to deter what he called Russian aggression. Troops are said to be dispatched to six other countries close to Russia's western border. Now, the current deployment is part of a NATO mission which was launched in 2014 after Crimea rejoined Russia. Moscow has repeatedly called the NATO's eastward expansion and its troop deployment along the Russian borders as aggressive and provocative. 
Crossing over to Montreal, joined by Michel Chasadovsky, Center from the Center for Research on Globalization. Thank you so much for being with us. What exactly is going on? Uh, does the U.S. Uh, want to actually uh, uh, basically go to war with Russia, or, or how do you assess this? Well, I would describe it as political insanity because the outgoing president, Barack Obama, uh, is uh, implementing what is called Operation Atlantic Resolve against Russia. Now, this Operation Atlantic Resolve is not something which is recent. It's been ongoing in the last few months. But it coincides with the, the accusations directed against Russia regarding the hacking of the of the US elections and what we are witnessing is first of all the United States is sending very large quantities of tanks and military hardware coupled with uh, the deployment of troops right at Russia's doorstep but in turn uh, America's European allies under NATO command are also deploying tens and thousands of troops uh, to Russia's border. And the irony is that this operation is described as a peacekeeping operation. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the, the military spokesperson is um, indicating that, in fact, the best way to prevent war is military preparedness. And, in fact, uh, what is happening is that concepts are being totally turned upside down. Russia is being accused of threatening the existential security of the United States through the hacking operation. And in turn, the United States, and in fact, uh, it goes even further than that, uh, it intimates that the Russian president is involved uh, in an action which constitutes an act of war. We're talking about that, the alleged cyber attack in the United States. And then in contrast, the operation at Russia's doorstep uh, is described by the commanding general of the U.S. Army, Timothy McGuire, uh, as follows, I quote, the best way to maintain the peace is through preparation. But in fact, what he means is war preparation. Right. And, uh, and uh, essentially what we have is a situation where the hacking operation is tagged as an act of war, uh, including by Senator McCain, uh, against the American homeland, on, and Operation Atlantic Resolve, involving a massive deployment of troops and military hardware, is categorized as an act of self-defense. Indeed. So, so what is the overall goal? What do you think this is, uh, what are they trying to get to? We see Obama, that he is on his way out, and uh, basically his administration continue to take lots of aggressive actions uh, against Russia. Uh, with the coming of President-elect Trump, uh, do you think that it will make a difference, specifically looking at this aspect of what we're talking about right now? Well, what... Uh these, um, what these military declarations uh, it seem to suggest is that the deployments will be in place before the 20th of January, of course, which is the inauguration of mm -hmm. the new presidency. In other words, I think what uh, Obama has done is a, is a, is a fat, what we might describe as a fast track. Mm -hmm. um, he wants to get as much deployment of military hardware and troops at Russia's border in the name of world peace before the inauguration 
of uh, the elected president, uh, Donald Trump, okay. and, and essentially present some kind of fait accompli. Mm -hmm. I suspect that this will not lead to any, it could lead to an incident, but I don't think it's going to lead to war. Um, but it does constitute a signal to Russia from the United States and, and, uh, and NATO. But I should also mention another thing, is that um, Poland is playing a very key role in there. And the United States um, has initiated uh, uh, projects of cooperation, of course, within NATO, to the fact that Poland would have between 95 thousand and a hundred and fifty thousand troops uh, in the case of a conventional war on Russia's border. Of okay, course, all if you of want, this Mike, is done go ahead and pause right there. And we'll be right back after a couple of words from the network sponsors. I'm not interested in This is RBN, the Republic Broadcasting Network. There was a mighty nation, blessed above all of creation. It was a rare and precious pearl. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Resurrected RTR Truth Radio Broadcast on RBN Network. I am Lori Anderson, your host for this evening, joined with co-host Eric Hughes-Jones of Courtroom Observers, also known as the Freedom Screamer. We've been discussing tonight the importance of NATO and the reason it is very important to get out of it. We're not going to continue with that clip. I think you get the point. We wanted you to be able to hear this Information. So what I did was I started researching, Eric, I started e researching Operation Atlantic Resolve because of this specific uh, interview that we just heard. And let me tell you and the audience some information that I found out about Operation Atlantic Resolve. Now, this is the fact sheet. This came off of the U.S. Department of Defense website itself, and uh, I will have those links available for you as well on my on my Google Plus collection that is for Resurrect the Republic. Operation Atlantic Resolve is a demonstration of our continued commitment to the collective security of NATO and dedication to the enduring peace and stability in the region in light of the Russian intervention in Ukraine specifically. So the reason I brought up Ukraine earlier and the reason I needed to get those facts out to you is because this is their whole basis for this Operation Atlantic Resolve. But this dates back, some of this back to 2015, 2014, and you need to know this information. The U.S. is, and, and I'm not going to read the whole document, obviously, we wouldn't be able to have time to go through all of it. So I'm going to pick and choose certain things, and then I want you to please do your research, get the document yourself, and read it for yourself. The U.S. took several intermediate steps to demonstrate solidarity with our NATO allies, such as augmenting the air ground and naval presence in the region and enhancing previously scheduled exercises. Now here we go with the scare tactics. Russia's aggressive actions. Oh, you mean protecting the people of where you are invading NATO? Sorry. Russia's aggressive actions have already led many to call for reinforcing NATO's readiness through Article 5 related planning training and adjustments to force posture to force posture operation atlantic resolve will remain in place as long as the need exists to reassure our allies and deter russia from regional hegemony wow the only ones who are doing 
uh, that is NATO and the NATO groups that are sitting around that round table. So let me tell you some other information you need to know. ERI is also known as the European Reassurance Initiative. ERI is part of the Consolidated and Further Continuing Appropriations Act of 2015, signed by President Obama on December the 19th, 2014. The fiscal year 2017 proposed budget seeks to significantly increase the ERI funding from two from seven hundred and eighty nine point three million dollars, which is what in fiscal year 2016. Are you ready for this, everyone? To approximately three point four billion dollars in 2017. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another point that I felt individuals needed to hear, this increased funding will significantly expand the ERI's focus from continued assurance of our commitment to NATO, allies, and partners to the inclusion of deterrence measures that vastly improve our overall readiness. Now, Saudi Arabia is in that. Am, am I correct with that? Where U.S. calls Saudi Arabia. Yeah, and they left uh, one convenient group off the list. They left off one conveniently left one group off their list of people that was going to benefit. You know, don't forget the military suppliers, the military industrial complex that President Eisenhower warned us about. So it's not me dreaming it up. Look what happened right. when we ignored his warning. Right, but it gets even better. So the ERI fiscal year set 2017 five lines of effort. Increased rotational presence. The United States will continue to maintain a persistent rotational presence of air, land, and sea forces in Central and Eastern Europe. Our increased rotational presence in Europe is fully in line with our international commitments and is a visible sign of our commitment to collective defense. Defending what? They're not defending anything. That is not defense. That is offense. Number two, additional bilateral and multilateral exercises and training. Now listen to this, everyone. This enhanced U.S. force presence in Europe will enable more extensive U.S. participation in exercises and training activities with NATO with NATO allies and partners, which ultimately improves our overall readiness and interoperability. In particular, this year's ERI budget will expand the scope of 28 joint and multinational exercises, which annually train more than 18,000 U.S. personnel alongside 45,000 NATO allies, and Partnership for Peace personnel across 40 countries. They will also be enhancing pre-positioning of U.S. equipment. Fiscal year 2017 request will increase our overall readiness by pre-positioning ammunition, fuel, and equipment, which enhances our ability to provide a rapid response against threats made by aggressive regional actors. This year's request will place additional Army pre-positioned stock, also known as APS, in Europe. These additional combat vehicles and supplies are intended to reduce force deployment times and will enable a rapid response to potential contingencies. Here's my question. If all of these individuals are NATO allies... And you're not worried about war because all these individuals are NATO allies. And if you look at Russia on the map, you look at Crimea on the map, very small compared to all of this, what are they worried about? We're, in, we're encircling them. They're not encircling they us. Are. And I gotta, if, if, it, if it wasn't so disgusting, I'd have to laugh at the Partnership for Peace. And by the right. way, yeah. on top of the military suppliers, I wonder how much big oil is making up all this fuel that's being burned, moving all this equipment around. Think about how much. 
So this is what it also says. It says the U.S. Army ERI implementation plan as part of the U.S. commitment to increased assurance and deterrence. U.S. Army Europe or USA R-E-U-R will begin receiving continuous troop rotations of U.S.-based armored brigade combat teams to the European Theater in February of 2017. So this right here is showing you something. Bringing the total Army presence in Europe up to three fully manned Army brigades. Also, as discussed during the announcement of the fiscal year 2017 ERI budget proposal, the Army has decided to begin storing static equipment known as Army prepositioned stocks within Europe for contingency operations. General Breedlove, quote, This is a big step in enhancing the Army's rotational presence and increasing their combat equipment in Europe. This Army implementation plan continues to demonstrate our strong and balanced approach to reassuring our NATO allies and partners in the wake of an aggressive Russia in Eastern Europe and elsewhere. This means our allies and partners will see more capability. They will see a more frequent presence of an armored brigade with more modernized equipment in their countries, unquote. So as you can see from what I just read, this was already planned for them to be moving these troops over there for February of 2017. That's not did you notice, really... Did you notice the, they never used to word, use the word partners with allies. They'd say our allies. Now it's allies and partners. Yes. That, that's yes, in there absolutely. for a very specific reason. Those partners, those partners are your private interests, and the interests yep. that are not are allies. Right now, this also states the ABCTs will be on nine-month rotations from the United States and will bring their own modern equipment to conduct exercises across the Atlantic Resolve countries. These rotations will demonstrate our ability to rapidly deploy equipment and forces to Europe by sending U.S.-based rotational forces with their currently assigned equipment. This equipment will be the most modernized the Army has to offer and over the next year will replace the current training equipment in Europe. What about our equipment here? There's tons of it sitting in mothballs while they make more and then give the stuff that's perfectly good off to the police department so they can use it on us patriots. Nice. Well, that's okay because we're, we're going to discuss. We're going to discuss. So in this, it says by the end of 2017, there will be a continuous presence of three fully equipped Army Brigade combat teams, one armored one airborne and one striker, one pre-positioned sect of combat-ready equipment sufficient to support another armored brigade combat team, as well as division-level enablers in Europe. Now, in this document, the Department of Defense, it, it lists Department of Defense efforts to date. And... Some of this goes back into 2015, the, the different names of the um, exercises that they did. They had one that was um, Exercise Combined Resolve, November the 2nd through the 6th of 2015, and that was in Hoffenfels, Germany, Combined Resolve the 5th had more than 4,600 participants from 10 NATO allied nations, including Albania, Bulgaria, France, Germany, Lithuania, Netherlands, Norway, Romania, Slovenia, and the United States, and three partner nations of Georgia, Montenegro, and Serbia. The purpose of this exercise was to execute a command post exercise that incorporated offensive and defensive operations focused on mission command in order to build mission command capability, increase readiness, and develop cohesiveness of the U.S. and allied partner nations. So, I 
would ask that our listeners please understand that you need to read this document. Um, We also need to understand that the Ukraine security assistance, listen to this, fiscal year 2016 Ukraine security assistance on March the 31st of 2016, Vice President Biden informed President Poroshenko that the United States was committing $335 million in fiscal year 2016 of security assistance to Ukraine as part of our ongoing efforts to help build the capacity of Ukraine's forces to preserve and enforce its territorial integrity. This package will bring our total security assistance committed to Ukraine in response to the crisis to more than $600 million since 2014. So what you need to know, they are, of course, doing anything and everything they can for us to fund more aggression. And so this goes to prove when you read through these documents, you read the dates and things like that, you realize why they have been trying to demonize Russia so bad. They're not going to get the money if they can't demonize Russia, make people afraid. But they are actively engaging in acts of war. You don't have to fire a shot to act in an aggressive manner as an act of war. Think about this. If Russia, China, Syria, Iran, uh, name me another one that's the boogeyman, Eric. Um, Oh, the, the typical North Korea, blah, 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 blah. Okay, North Korea. Okay, let's just say those five. Okay, if those five boogeymen were to come to the edge of our borders and surround the United States of America, what do you think would happen? Would you feel like that was okay? Would you feel threatened in any way, shape, or form with them bringing military tanks and air force and uh, thousands of troops and uh, surface-to-air missiles, I'm sure, are probably included in that, and and, uh, Navy vessels and all the different things for the deployment. Would you be okay with Russia, Syria, North Korea, Iran, and uh, those individuals doing that? Would, would that be okay to you? Would, would you not look at that as maybe that's a possible threat? Maybe we should put uh, military hardware on our border and be ready to fight because it appears as if they are going to attack us. And if you're going to be honest, there is no way you cannot say, yeah, we would need to protect our borders and our people. That's exactly what's going on right now, everyone. And they're doing it under a fictitious, fictitious story that fake news has continued to push and prompt constantly. I'll give you a perfect example. I'm going to, there was some fake news, and and I didn't think I was going to play this, but I'm going to because I'm going to show you just how they twist this. Mike, if you would um, play LV1 so people can hear the propaganda that this is supposed to be mainstream media, that the propaganda that they put up, put out in order to try to twist this to make this seem like it is okay. Please play LV1. The Obama administration is boosting the American military presence in Europe to deter potential Russian aggression. Tanks and other tanks and other weapons have just arrived in Bremerhaven, Germany. Starting today, they will be moved to Poland. Elizabeth Palmer spoke to commanders about the buildup. Good morning. Since the end of the Cold War, the United States has been steadily drawing down its military presence in Europe. But here in northern Germany right now, you can see that's no longer the case. In fact, 
it's quite the opposite. All the massive hardware of a combat brigade arrived in Germany over the weekend and started rolling east toward Poland, where 4,000 American soldiers will be waiting for it. This is the first buildup of American soldiers and weapons in Europe in nearly 30 years. This impressive display of military might is designed in large part to reassure America's nervous European allies that the U.S. military will be there, standing with them against Russian aggression. Aggression and land grabs, like the 2014 invasion of Crimea, when Russian troops landed in what had been Ukraine and seized it for the Kremlin. America's response has been to increase both its own force in Europe and its support of NATO, though President-elect Donald Trump has called NATO obsolete and says he wants to restore good relations with Russia. Major General Timothy McGuire. How quickly could the new president, uh, as a gesture of goodwill to Russia, turn this whole thing around and pull you all out again? Uh, I'm not going to speculate on what the uh, incoming president may or may not do, but I will tell you uh, this is in the interest of the United States uh, Army to build readiness. The commander-in-chief could reverse all this, but it would take months or even years. Meanwhile, Vladimir Putin has already implied this build-up is pointless. It's stupid and unrealistic, he said, to think that Russia would attack anyone. But the American military and its NATO allies believe a little extra deterrence won't hurt. Once the new combat brigade has reached its final destination in Eastern Europe, it will start large multinational military exercises with the armies of other NATO countries. Nora? Very significant development. Glad Elizabeth Palmer is reporting there. So not only are they painting Russia as a bad guy, woohoo, we're the heroes because we're going over and, and we're smothering an independent and <laughs> sovereign country. And if you could hear it, you could hear it in that military gentleman's voice. He really believes what he's saying. He really thinks it is in the best it is best for our, our army. Really? Really? So here's some suggestions, and this is my opinion, and then I'm going to get to the caller that is on the line. So, Bill, please hold on. This is my opinion, and the reason I'm saying it's my opinion, because it is not something that is based off of anything except for the common sense that we are hearing and we're finding out about. So this is my opinion and my message to Mr. President-elect Donald Trump. I know that you want to modernize our military equipment as well as expand our naval forces with more naval ships. That is constitutional, and I agree with that. As the Navy and Marines is truly the only constitutional continuous military that there is and it is supposed to be used for defense and for safety on the seas I believe I have an idea which will not only help fund your plan for new ships new equipment But it will also help to stop needless deaths of our military personnel around the globe. It will help strengthen families. It will stop invasions. It will strengthen our nation as a whole. And it will not add any new spending or taxes. So, this is my suggestion. In fiscal year 2017, and this is only for the European Reassurance Initiative, this is not even the whole of amount of money that Washington, D.C. is throwing to this NATO cause. 
there is supposed to be $3.4 billion in 2017 to be given for the ERI initiative as part of the Consolidated and Continuing Appropriations Act of 2015. Whereas constitutionally, we're supposed to stay out of foreign entanglements. And Washington, D.C. has a great job and does a great job of redistributing wealth. This will also continue to support our jobs here in America. As well as build up what we need to be to have rebuilt but to protect our union and not invade other countries let's take that 3.4 billion dollars that is planned for the european reassurance initiative and put that money into rebuilding our military and equipment number 1 we would save money Number two, we would get out of the foreign entanglements, which have caused mass chaos around the globe. Our founders warned us about the foreign entanglements. Yet Washington has been all too happy to be engaged in them. Number three, we would have a much more secure union if our military were here to protect us from the invasion that we are currently dealing with and actually protect our union instead of taking marching orders from NATO that has caused mass chaos and murder around the globe. By doing that, we would also lower the death rate of our veterans and our military Our military families would be stronger because they would be not apart as much. And we would also lower the global death rate. Thus, that would make not only our union, but it would also make the globe a much more stable place. we would ultimately be headed back towards our constitutional union becoming constitutional again and getting out of these unlawful invasions, thus causing the United States of America to be seen in a different light again and gaining the respect of our people within our union, as well as of those that are around the globe. So you can find, just in this Operation Atlantic Resolve, and the European Reassurance Initiative, $3.4 billion, to help our veterans, to help rebuild our ships, to protect our union, and get out of NATO. We are sick and tired of our men and women being sent to other countries to help terrorism. That's terrorism. When you go over and you try to force another country because you are a big bad bully and you join with 40 other nations, or whatever the case may be, 28, however many are involved in this one. How dare you call that democracy? How dare you? So that's where you can find some of your money, $3.4 billion, and if you didn't want to redistribute it for that, by all means, feel free to stick it to the debt that we have because of the corrupt 
politicians sitting in Washington. You said you were going to drain the swamp. Now let's get it done. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. This is the most transparent administration in history. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. Without the right accessories, any guy can be off the mark. Whether you've invested thousands in your arsenal or you own a single trusted firearm, a visit to aroutfitting.com is in order. It's one of the finest online selections of tactical optics and AR parts and add-ons, like EOTech, quick target acquisition with no peripheral loss. Browse the full range of Nikon scopes and binoculars. AirOutfitting.com can illuminate your world with streamlight gun-mounted lights from keychain to large handhelds up to 1,100 lumens. Find some stability with Battenfield Tactical Bipods. AirOutfitting.com has CMMG gun parts, barrels, assemblies, handguards, part kits, and more. Plus magful clips and magazines. I know I've got you excited, so take a breath. Head to AirOutfitting.com. The site's super easy to navigate and features a ton of technical info, including links to manuals. We also welcome vendor and manufacturer inquiries. Remember, if you don't see it, we can get it at AirOutfitting.com. Would odors, mold, and mildew describe your basement or crawl space? It doesn't have to be that way. Transform them into a fresh, healthy, usable one with the technologically advanced Wave Moisture Control Units. The computerized operation maximizes moisture control and also expels harmful radon, combustion gases, and numerous other pollutants. Dehumidifiers are old technology that do nothing for air quality and waste energy. Wave units are intelligent, self-monitoring, do not need maintenance, and will save you hundreds in electricity. Wave units are still running effectively effectively over 15 years. They've been tested and installed in public and military housing and by property managers nationwide. Buy a unit now and if your home is not fresher and drier, you can return it for a full refund for up to 12 months. What have you got to lose? Call now. 1-888-618-WAVE. 1-888-618-WAVE or visit mydryhome.com. That's mydryhome.com. Wave home solutions for a healthy comfortable home. I have actually been on Balance of Nature for a year now. I have MS, and I recently had an MRI. This is the first year that I've had a stable MRI, so I'm thrilled. When I have an MRI with MS, usually there are glowing spots that come through, which is damage on the, on the nerves in my brain and my spinal cord, and when they're glowing, it means they're active. And then my last MRI, they pulled it up, and I honestly couldn't believe that it was my MRI. There was nothing glowing. And in fact, the dark spots were shrinking. They were healing. And the doctor actually said to me, I think we're in remission. I was so happy. I had no idea that that could be my reality. The new challenge will allow you to receive two months of Balance of Nature's fruits and veggies free. And we'll even ship them to you free. Call now for details. Call 1-800-2468-751 or go online to balanceofnature.com. Use promo code TALK. Homeowners, are you in foreclosure, expecting to be served with a foreclosure lawsuit, or suspect your lender has coerced you into an illegal mortgage transaction? A huge number of mortgages made in the last 10 years have legal issues and are possibly defective. State laws and the U.S. Supreme Court have upheld that defective mortgage documents are grounds for foreclosure defense and for counterclaims in favor of the homeowner. If your mortgage has been sold or assigned since closing the loan, it may be defective and you may be paying the wrong party and the lender may not have standing or the right to foreclose or collect payments under the law. If you would like to know if your mortgage is legal or not or know if you are paying the right party, we can help. Our initial consultations are free of charge. We are not attorneys. We are legal researchers and work closely with experienced lawyers who know how to help you find the evidence to help you keep your home. Call toll free 1-855-2-KEEP-IT. That's 1-855- the number 2 keep it today. Hello, everyone, and welcome. 
Welcome back to Resurrect the Republic RTR Truth Radio Broadcast on RBN Network. I am your host, Lori Anderson, joined with co-host Eric Hughes-Jones of Courtroom Observers, also known as the Freedom Screamer. So I'm going to give you a little bit more money in which, as a suggestion to Mr. Trump, soon to be President Trump, January the 20th coming up soon, in order to help fund and build our equipment back up, take care of our veterans and our military. I'm all for a strong military. I'm not for invading or playing like we're doing peacekeeping missions when we're not. Sugarcoating stopped a long time ago. So if you check out the U.S. aid activity, which I will have a link on that as well in my Google Plus, follow me on Google Plus, Lori Anderson, L-O-R-R-I-A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N. Also follow the Resurrect the Republic RTR Truth Radio Broadcast Collection. You will be able to get this information on there. I always share this stuff. So, Ukraine received $99,409 in 2001. Uh, It says, for health and general assistance for the independent states of former Soviet Union. 2006, $99,821. I'm just going to go down the list of the money, not even go what it's for. $99,931 $99,930 in 2011, 2003, $99,983, 2001, $99,057, 2010, $99,980, 2008, $99,999. Anyone noticing a pattern here? 2011, $99,970, 2012, 97002 Two hundred forty-four dollars, two thousand and four, ninety-seven thousand seven hundred and eighty-nine dollars. At the bottom of this, it is stating, and and I don't know why it is stating this, but I will tell you. <laughs> it says total amount. Two billion nine hundred forty six million seventy one thousand three hundred and eighty one dollars. Wow. You think we could find some money? And and people need to understand every bit of this there is nothing and nowhere in the constitution that permits us to be for for the government to be handing our money to help take care of any country. Now, I am a Christian and I am compassionate. But the fact of the matter is, this is not really truly being used for anything that is compassionate. We all know this. USAID food is used in order to help ISIS, ISIL, Mishahadeen, Anwar al-Sharia. Which one do you want to pick? Yes, the same Mushahadeen that Hillary Clinton admitted that we put together, the, not we, me and you, but the U.S. government helped to put together and fund and so they could go into Russia. And Russia is supposed to be the bad guy. Now, I'm going to tell you, if Russia does something wrong and they're, in the, they're, they're doing something that is bad, and I have no problem calling that out either. But I'm tired of people pretending like they're patriots and then they say that I absolutely have to, you know, support our military no matter what. I support our military men and women on an individual basis. I do. I also support their uniform code of military justice duty to disobey. And this is absolutely unexcusable that they keep on making this okay. According to the United States Department of Defense, um, 
They posted on January 5th, 2017, deployments bolster U.S. presence in the Western Pacific, Europe. Washington, January 5th, 2017, Pentagon Press Secretary Peter Cook announced operational deployments that will boost the U.S. presence in the Western Pacific and Europe. Quote, ships and units from the Carl Vinson Strike Group will depart San Diego for a regularly scheduled deployment to the Western Pacific, Cook told the Pentagon reporters today. Approximately 7,500 sailors will deploy and focus on maritime security operations, theater security cooperation efforts, and bilateral exercises, he said. The Armored Brigade Combat Team headed to Europe. Separately, Cook said that the United States is demonstrating its continued commitment to collective security through a series of actions designed to reassure NATO allies and partners of America's dedication to enduring peace and stability in the region in light of Russia's intervention in Ukraine. Now, mind you, this is 2017, and they still want to go back to the stuff that was going on in 2014. Tanks and trucks and other equipment are scheduled to arrive in Europe this weekend, beginning a nine-month rotation of U.S. Army forces supporting Operation Atlantic Resolve, the press secretary said. The arrival of troops and equipment from 3rd Armored Brigade Combat Team, 4th Infantry Division out of Fort Carson, Colorado, marks the beginning of the presence of an ABCT and back-to-back rotations of U.S. troops and equipment in Europe, he said. After the equipment arrives at Bermerhaven, Germany, it will move by rail, commercial line hall, and military convoy to Poland, Cook said. Troops and equipment will later be relocated throughout the region for training and exercises with European allies. This effort, quote, this effort is part of our European Reassurance Initiative. That's what I was just discussing with you. To maintain persistent rotational presence of air, land, and sea forces in Central and Eastern Europe, he said. So we're rolling so we're rolling tanks into Eastern Europe. Sounds like what the Soviets did in the fifties. Oh, this is bad because the the clips that I shared with the audience today and I really hope that I really hope that they go to my spot on Google Plus because you will actually be able to visually see them. It is outlandish, and um, it is massive, and it really, it saddens me, but it disgusts me. And then, you know, with what you were bringing up at the beginning of the show. um, A new world order is in the Secretary of State's position coming right up. Right. So the, the issue is just... Absolutely insanity. But people have to be told the truth so that they understand Russia's not the issue. We are people. Our, well, hypothetically, our taxes. <laughs> I'll say hypothetically because we'll cover the Grace Report on a different day and then you'll see why I say hypothetically. But allegedly, our taxes go to pay for this $3.4 billion for what I've just reported to you. And they want Russia to be the bad guy. So, of course, fake news has to report that Russia's the boogeyman. They're the bad guy. They're so evil. Really? Check NORAD. N-O-R-A-D. All the letters together. Check out NORAD. See how evil Russia is. They were training with our troops. I also would like to know why they are using in this Operation Atlantic Resolve, not necessarily in this specific fact sheet, but in in the older ones. I noticed, Eric, as well, that they were using um, National Guard. National Guard are not for – they're not supposed to go outside of the United States of America. They're supposed to be for the protection of inside the United States of America, and I want to know why they keep getting by with doing that as well. Um, but I want to get to our caller, Eric. Uh, Bill, how are you doing this evening? Hey, Bill, can you hear me, Lori? I can. How are you doing this evening? Well, this is the first time I've really listened to this show. I listened to the Trump phenomenon 
mm-hmm. and uh, generally have supported Trump, although mm-hmm. I do have concerns. Right. When I bring up some of those concerns on the Trump phenomenon, it causes Kelso to go off the rail. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, I also saw on PBS today the confirmation hearing for General Mattis. Mm, yeah, that's a subject we can touch on. <laughs> and both of them uh, took essentially the hard line against Russia and and so forth. On a local PBS Mattis. show uh, last weekend, they interviewed a uh, two-term senator-elect from Wisconsin, Ron Johnson. Mm-hmm. And he was totally in favor of all of what you said tonight mm-hmm. in uh, supporting the Ukraine against mm-hmm. Russia and so-called Russian aggression in uh, mm-hmm. Crimea and so forth. So here's the dilemma, okay? Trump has made favorable comments about Putin and vice versa. Right. I believe he's, for what reason, I, I, I think he's sincere in that he does not want to see us involved in a war with Russia. However, I believe that. I believe that. Yeah, however, everybody that he's got coming in, mm-hmm. Pompeo, uh, you know, uh, General Mattis, yep. and I would imagine uh, General Kelly, mm-hmm. you know, they're all uh, going to be taking this position. The Republican establishment is going to be taking this position. So what's going to happen? I think, and, and of course all of the Democrats who supposedly are from the left and don't like the CIA and and all the wars and everything else, but because of Obama and Clinton and everything, they're totally on board. So oh, they didn't left mind. With, they, don't, they don't mind the CIA as long as it's what they want to do. They didn't have yeah. any problem with it when Obama was doing it. I have a problem. I don't care if it's an R behind your name or a D behind your name or an I behind your name. Our people and the people around the globe do not deserve this, and it is up to us. It is our duty to speak out against it. Precisely, and especially when you talk about entangling alliances. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is the reason why, you know, we don't get involved or should not get involved in all of this uh, international, uh, global, world orders, whatever. Okay, so I think they're going to, you know, if Trump is actually sincere, Mm -hmm. they will try whatever means they can between now and Mm -hmm. then to, uh, you know, cast aspersions on his administration. Mm -hmm. If he survives and is not assassinated, then they will begin... Uh, this process of impeachment or mm-hmm. whatever to remove him. And Pence, uh, well, you know, Pence is they, they establishment Republican. He's they, neocon. And, and the whole thing is all set up. Trump is out. All these people are in. And it's continuation of the New World Order with a capital R. Well, on the impeachment comment, you know, they could they could try that, but they have nothing – there's nothing to impeach him for. Um, and even if they were to try it, because they have so few in the House and the Senate, because you know it starts in the Senate, for the, for the impeachment hearings. But – Well, Lori, since you brought that word, I wanted to know – I, I want to know why Senator Sessions – it seemed to be very suspiciously that he was leading Leon Panetta to a place where they could kind of agree that they would end up at the New World Order. Well, maybe not the greatest thing, but let's get it through. Jeff Sessions, why didn't he say, 
Mr. Pinocchio, if you t- if you decide you're going to go to a foreign entity to get permission to take our military to war, then you're going we're going to impeach you and we're going to indict you for treason. Why didn't he say something firm well, like that? He just said, "Where are you going to go for your permission, Mr. Panetta?" And he said, "Oh, right. yeah, over there." And well, he said, "Really?" And I understand I don't that, like, but you I don't also like understand the down of the right. We are, I, well, you got to understand too, Eric. We are so much different than the politicians in Washington because if we were in Washington, and you know this, thank God, right? If we were in Washington, they wouldn't get by with this mess because we'd call them out on live live TV in front of all Americans. We call it like we see it. And I think a lot of that has to do with they want to call the individuals out. They want to let the individuals hang themselves, which Jeff Sessions did do. And if you hear the whole thing, it's it's pretty darn good. But in the same token... They don't want to appear unprofessional, okay? When I am She's fighting our for our There's people, a lot of blood being spilled. when I am fighting for our people, political correctness can go out of the window. Right. I'm just saying. And a lot of the re- listeners here, I'm sure, Bill, you would probably agree with that as well. Uh, don't, don't play with me with sugarcoating all this time and all this other stuff. You know, they could have been had Obama impeached. They can they can sit there and claim all they want to. Oh, well, we didn't have this and we didn't have that. Yes, they could have. Yes, they could have. No excuses. The sergeant at arms has the authority to arrest the president. Many people do not know that. When he openly admitted that we are arming, funding, and training ISIL and terrorists, Right then, he should have been arrested. It's treason. Absolutely, absolutely. That, hey, hey, Bill that and was, John McCain, and John McCain, who helped it, and any of the other yeah. senators that backed it, them too. Immediately, no questions asked. Don't pass go. Don't collect your two hundred dollars, buddy. You're getting in cuffs. You're going to be tried for treason. And they can't say see with the treason clause. They have to either admit it. Or they have to do it in front of two or three witnesses, right? Well, they did their stuff on national television. There's millions of witnesses that they did it plus yeah, video proof. It. You know. So go ahead, uh, Eric, with Bill. Well, yeah, uh, one other add- place go ahead, Bill. That, that they could save money is the huge uh, $38 billion that they're giving to Israel mm-hmm. over the next 10 years. That's 3.8 per year. And again, if we don't want to, if we want to ensure that we don't have entangling alliances, nope. that's another good place to start. Well, and I'm not. You know, that, that, no, that is fiscally responsible. And here's my thing. We are, they, the Washington is using quote unquote U.S. aid if you will, and, of course, tons of different programs that probably don't even fall under USAID um, to fund everyone around the globe, right? right? And let's be realistic. First of all, you have to be able to have your own house in order before you can take care of someone else. That's biblical. Why? Because if you don't, your house is going to fall apart. You can't take care of someone else if you can't take care of yourself. Our union is falling apart we allegedly don't have this money to do this, and we have to borrow this, and we're in this kind of debt, and we're in, but yet we're giving away money hand over fist. I'm not anti quote anti Israel. I'm not anti anything. I am pro humanity. Um, however, we have no responsibility, nor um, really the money's not going to the Israelis we, any, and it's not going to matter. the Israelis, Lori. It's going to but, the military suppliers. That money's not going to the people of Israel. Under, it's going to the military under, suppliers. That's right. They get the weapons. That's but, right. the rea- yeah. it, but that's irrelevant to what I'm talking about. The fact of the matter is, is we should not be sending our money collected off of our work, off of our backs, because it's sweat money. That's what it is. Right. It's yep. Fiat money. 
we work a certain amount of hours and we get this cute little paper that they pretend is money and we keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. And we should not be doing that with any country, any country, not just Israel, any country, because we need to take care of our own home. We need to take care of our own children. We need to have our borders secured. We need to take care of our own people. We need to take care of our veterans who are dying at a mass rate of 22 a day or more, that 40,000 of them were not taken care of, so they died because the VA didn't take care of them. We have all this stuff going on. They claim we can't do this, we can't do that, we can't do this, we can't do that. Then they want to take our liberties and freedoms from us individually, being able to create something to help others while they're taking and throwing that money away, and they're throwing the money away because they don't earn it. They don't care. They don't earn it. It doesn't affect them. Oh, my gosh. You know, just the waste report. Add up all that stuff. Add up USAID. Add up all the stuff. And then they're wanting to give, uh, what was it, 600 tons of weapons to Saudi Arabia. Billions of dollars to Saudi Arabia. Okay, do not tell me you're anti-terrorism while you are funding, arming, and helping individuals who were connected with the 9-11 issue in New York. Well, both now, Israel and the Saudis are in that, and the oh, yeah, CIA. And and, well, I know that, but I'm saying yeah. in general, in the big picture, you know, don't tell me that. Right. These I agree with individuals you. are not pro-humanity. Whether you believe in God or whether you don't believe in God is irrelevant. It's even atheists know that it is not proper to stone to death a female because she was raped. Right. Even Absolutely. atheists know that it is not okay to chop somebody's head off because they... Sl- quote, quote, slandered the prophet Islam, uh, Muhammad, because they said, you know, they're pro-Christian. Even atheists know that it is not okay to go out and sling a gay man off of a building just because you don't agree with them being gay. To refinance your home, or you could push that well, I leave that uh, solution up to the good Lord. At some point here, he's going to straighten out the world. But, uh, right. But, yeah. but what I'm saying is, even people who do not believe in God, right? Okay, there is to the core of the human being of, of an individual of a person that they know this is wrong even you know a lot of the most ruthless people you know and God takes care of things in his own time and we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God every one of us right one sin in his eyes is just as big as another sin. You can go to hell over fear just as quick as you can over murder. Read Revelation. Fear, because God didn't instill in us a spirit of fear. We are overcomers by the power of our testimony. Well, I'm going to sign off here. I appreciate your analysis. Well, and, thank you. Uh, Bill, how, how long are you going to be on this show? Um, I'm actually quite regularly on this show. Um, I haven't been feeling well lately, so Eric, thank God, has has been wonderful and stepped up for me. Uh, he or I will be on the show. We have a couple of other hosts that are on the show too, but uh, please continue to listen in. We love our callers. We love to engage in conversation. Even if it's something we don't necessarily agree with, we will listen. We will hear your side, and then we'll kind of do a debate because that's how 
people learn. And I want to say thank you so much for calling in. Keep listening to us. And please join us tomorrow night, everyone. We're going to have an update from Lori about Tom. And uh, if you want to donate to help Tom out, remember, it's TomLacavera at gmail.com off of PayPal. Thank you. God bless you. And as always, everyone, watch your backs and check your facts. God bless you and good night. Good night, everybody. husband your